I'm going to keep this one short because I'm getting a bit of a sore throat. This week I started experimenting with the 3D features of Godot. It hasn't been the smoothest experience, but perhaps some of what I figured out will be helpful to others. Please keep in mind, everything I'm showing here is just early experimentation, and the finished game will look much better. However, the general idea is to have a mix of pixel art sprites and 3D models with pixelated textures. My first difficulty was that the camera preview in the editor isn't entirely accurate. In my original Godot project, the preview showed the ship model as I expected, but I got nothing but solid black when running the game. My guess is that I changed something in the project settings long ago when I thought I would be doing 2D only. When I recreated the same scene in a new project, it worked just fine. Rather than go back and try to fix it, I think I actually want to start from a clean slate and just copy over anything from the old project that's still useful. The camera preview is also inconsistent with depth sorting when I added a box around the selected unit. As you can see, both the main 3D view and the running game show the box entirely behind the crew sprite, but the camera preview shows it the way I want. My theory is, the preview is rendering objects in a different order, but I have no idea why. The tricky thing with transparent objects is if they write to the depth buffer, they'll prevent objects from drawing behind them. Or, the front of this cube can even prevent the back of the same cube from drawing. That's not specific to Godot. Using depth buffers this way is standard practice for most real-time 3D rendering. I've done a lot of trial and error, but so far my only solution that works is to have two copies of the cube, one for back faces and one for the front. I'm not sure whether my other solutions aren't working because of quirks with Godot, or if I've just made a mistake somewhere. My next problem was with adding shadows to the sprites. I was getting rectangular shadows as if none of the sprite was transparent. None of the suggestions I found online by googling worked, so I ended up manually editing the shader. All I had to do was make the fragment shader discard transparent pixels, and then I got the shadow shape I expect. However, that's not the last of my shadow problems. There's an empty spot in the middle directly below the sprite. At first glance, it might look like the sprite is just hovering above the floor, but as I move the sprite up and down, you can see that's not the problem. Maybe it's a side effect of the billboarding, which is currently set to always face the camera in the XZ axis. Shadow mapping typically involves rendering from the point of view of the light, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's some weirdness in the interaction between those two features. A flat sprite can't cast entirely realistic shadows anyway, billboard or not, so what I might do is add an invisible mesh to cast a shadow instead. The last of my complications so far was with selecting 3D objects by clicking. If I add an area node with a shape for the clickable area, I can implement an input event method on the area node to detect when it's clicked. But that mysteriously wasn't working, so I tried ray casting instead, basically firing a ray through the screen at the clicked point and seeing what it hits, but that didn't work either. Finally, I found this input ray pickable property on the area. Curiously, the tooltip says it's on by default, but it wasn't. Regardless, turning this on made the input event function start working, and as you can see, I can now select units. Popular opinion seems to be that Godot isn't as strong with 3D as it is for 2D, and I'm starting to see why. It's a bit rough around the edges, but that doesn't mean it lacks any of the capabilities you need to make a good 3D game with it. Honestly, I can't see if this has more or fewer quirks than other 3D engines. My past experience with 3D has all been using my own engine, or no engine at all. However, the best part of using an open source engine is if I can't make it do what I want as is, I can always change it. I might be taking some time off if this cold gets any worse, but before I wrap this up, I'd like to announce the ThoughtQuake Discord server is now open to the public. I'm kind of new to this, but if you'd like to join us and discuss the game or game development in general, you can use the invite link on the screen or in the video description. I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters, and especially David Nurkula, for encouraging words and generous contributions over the last few months. If you'd like to support my game development journey, you can do that at patreon.com thoughtquake. And as always, it really helps if you hit like on this video, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.